Welcome back Pi Agents. In this video we are going to uh, walk through how to download and install Docker Desktop and MongoDB Compass. But before we do that, you might have heard, or just for the good sake here, I'll cover it, uh, in certain environments we would download something called, I think, MongoDB Community Server, similar to how if you were to develop for SQL Server, you would install SQL Server Express, but those are bloaty and they're not the right approach for what our series is uh, focusing on, which is the uh, combination of Python and DevOps. We want to be machine agnostic. This should work uh, locally for us, irregardless of the machine that we're using, you know, Windows, Mac OS, Linux. Uh, and thus we're going to avoid that. And Docker opens a whole new world for us. Uh, so let's we'll delve into that later but first thing first we'll search for docker desktop and you might see different links and you see they're all leading to docker.com and uh, let's just say i pick one here and you, you picked another one you should always go to this button get started because you don't need to log in or create an account to use docker desktop and once we we'll click get started we see this download docker desktop if you're using a Mac with a M1 Plus series, I mean M1, M2, M3, and so on, then it's the Apple Silicon you want. Uh, if it's an older one with the Intel chip, then that's the one you want. Uh, otherwise, you have one for Linux here, and we have even this one for beta, but we'll go with AMD64, the default one. And uh, since I've already downloaded it and installed it, uh, I'll let you do this and you can continue. The steps for installing it is pretty straightforward. Uh, and another software we're going to need, as I mentioned in the beginning, is MongoDB Compass. And if we come here, and no, oh, I don't like cookies, uh, we can click the download now here. Um, we can scroll down, and we see here we can select the different versions uh, Windows, Mac, M1, there, plus, as you see, uh, Linux, right? You download that and install it as well. Once that's done, uh, we'll open up Docker Desktop. So sometimes it might open up directly for you, but I've noticed that it's just start on the icon uh, there and you can configure that. So I'll double click here. And this might look a bit different when you come here. It like prompt you to sign in or register, but you don't have to do that. There will be a skip button. And similarly, you might see this, I'll press X. As I said, you don't need to be logged in. We will explore certain parts of this as we go on later, but the most important, uh, let's see, links here for us, the sections are the containers, images, and volumes. If I click on images right now, we have nothing. And we want to uh, install Mongo. And uh, we see there's a local and Docker posters, but uh, this one requires that you're signed in. Uh, right now, we'll click on this search images to run. And if I search for Mongo, uh, we see that there's one that has this like a green icon, and that's called a Docker official image. And those are the ones you can trust. You, uh, you have to be careful sometimes with these. Uh, better be safe than sorry. But we can also confirm like it has 1 billion plus uh, downloads and 10k plus stars. Um, yes, can't keep my mouse there for some reason. And we can pull it here. And it will download it for us. In the meantime, I'll show you a different approach. Um, say you also want to explore more images in a different UI. So you just search for Docker Hub here. And we see it's the first link here, the hub.docker.com. And here you could have searched for Mongo. And we see the most uh, important one, most relevant one came up here. Same stats, 1 billion plus downloads, 10k plus stars. Nearly 3 million pulls just in the last week. Uh, fairly updated. This one updated three years ago. Not good. And you can see, you can explore here. There are different categories. Uh, if I click here, there are some instructions that we could follow, uh, which we'll probably delve into later, but uh, it's not relevant for our use case right now. But for those who like uh, the command line interface, you could have used this command, docker pull mongo, copy. And it would have done the same. We see it's down, downloaded. Size just uh, approximately 900 megabytes. Now, there are, there's the command line interface of creating a container. Uh, I'm going to show you the graphical user interface just so we're inclusive, everyone. You, you guys who are accustomed with the command line interface, go with that if you like. 
So we'll press the run button here, and this one uh, has a title of run a new container, so it'll be creating a new container for us. We'll, we can go with the defaults, but uh, I want to show you the optional settings here. And by default, if you don't input any container name, it gets a random name, which I don't really, I, I like named things. So I can, when I have a lot of containers, I know what's what. So I'm going to call this MongoDB uh, Sandbox. And um, then I'm going to assign the port that batches uh, the uh, MongoDB's port. I'm going to just write 7 or so. So, so 27, 0, 17. And that's all. I click run. We see something is running. It might be complicated. Where do we go? We can click here. It returns the images, which we didn't want. But we can click here, containers. And there we see our, we see the name, MongoDB Sandbox. If I size it up, we get a little more space. We have the image, Mongo latest, uh, the ports. Now, now that's set up. We can finally open the MongoDB Compass uh, software you installed. So, right, oh, it's there, click enter. And then, now I, we have no connections right now. I want to add the connection to this one. So I'll press here, add new connection. And here it already created a default connection URI for us, a connection string that uh, looks at our local host. I mean, our computer, the local machine, and the default port. That is why they uh, set this uh, by default, because you know, we are accustomed to it. And I'm gonna give it a name. For example, MongoDB and dash uh, localhost, because later on we will connect to cloud. And I might give it a, some interesting color, perhaps. Uh, let's go with green. I'll favorite it. And I'll save and connect. Oh, we're now connected to our MongoDB. And we have three databases here already, which we're not going to touch. Uh, but how does it look? So if I put my mouse on the title here, we see there's a plus button here. Here we could have created a database. And I'll give it a name, just some... Uh, don't delete me database. And we also have to specify a collection for the first time, so... Um, some potato collection, perhaps, just to be boring. We'll come up with better names when we uh, delve into the more fun stuff. And there we have it. And here I can import data, I can add data. Um, we'll explore some of these as uh, our need requires it. But I just want to show you that uh, when you hover over the database, there's a plus icon here, and we can create new collections. We can delete collections, drop collection. Oh no, don't delete me. Oh, I think I deleted the database. Oh. That's okay, we don't need you anymore. And now we have everything in place. And you can disconnect if you're not using this. Uh, later on, you will have one for uh, cloud and we can connect to that one. So it's nice to have these named and you know where to find them. And uh, in our Docker desktop, uh, we can see that, okay, maybe I'm not using this anymore. I can just shut it off. Or when I come back, I just can turn it on again and I can shut it off. And I can delete this container any time I want. Something went wrong. You did something wrong uh, or just it might not have been your fault. I mean, why am I assuming things? <laughs> but uh, uh, you can just delete it if you like. Uh, we have the image here. We don't need to redownload it. We can always create a new container from it. And the third tab here, volumes. Um, you see, we have two volumes here from doing this. And this is where, let's just say, the memory is stored, uh, the collections, the databases. They're never stored in the container. This is stateless. You know, but we use these volumes. And we some eventually perhaps see the power of volumes. But for right now, uh, if you were to delete these, uh, reboot it, we would not have any memory. And if I delete this container now, those volumes are also lost. So this is what creates the persistence. We can shut down, shut off, uh, shut down, reboot our containers, and we will be able to access our old data. So it's a uh, pretty neat for local development. And I'll create a new one just for good measure. And this one I just called Mongo Sandbox, keep it uh, simple, 27%, run, and it's back. Click containers again, shut it off. 
And in the next video, we'll look into our editors. Until next time, Pi Agents.